In this video, we're going to talk about the Photoshop export plugin. Now, I really like this plugin because it allows you to kind of set up everything in one place. It's all self-contained, it's easy to navigate, and it gives you a lot more preview feedback, if you will, and also allows you to print 16-bit printing if you have that uh, extra bit depth in your image. So let's take a look at how we can do that. So let's go up to File and go to the Export portion and go to your printer, which is going to be the export plugin, depending on which printer you have in the IPF series. That'll open up the export plugin dialog box. If you don't see that, you may have to go to the Canon website and install this. So we're going to start out in the main tab. And if you go under the preview pull down, you can see that there are a bunch of different ways in which we can show this image on the left. The image will fill the frame. The print layout option will allow you to move the image around with the hand and show you the size of the white space of the uh, canvas size that you've created. Again, back at image, you can, you can zoom in and click to, click to zoom out. I like this feature to be able to sort of get a look at how the image, if I'm making any adjustments, uh, any changes that have happened to it. And then the roll preview shows a gray line where it's going to cut and the size that you've set up. So you can toggle between those and get a feel for it and sort of understand how that works. I prefer to use it on the image when I'm making adjustments. Okay, so now we wanna make sure that we have the proper printer selected and the media type for that particular job. So whatever you have loaded within the printer is what you wanna set here. In this case, it's the Canon Glossy Photo Paper 170. Next, we can go into the Advanced dialog box Generally, you're going to leave this dialog box on its defaults, but if there are some settings in here you want to uh, change, you can go into them. You can change the dry time, some of the margins, and the cut speed. Uh, you could also disregard the calibration value. Um, you can set up for unidirectional printing, means ink in one direction, or by default it's going to print bidirectional. Um, as well, the last one, high precision text and fine lines, when that's selected, will slow down the printing, but will offer you more precise dot placement. And here you can see a screen capture from the manual explaining that in more detail. Now keep in mind, if you click defaults here, as I just did, and we go OK, it's going to reset you back to defaults. So we're going to go back and we're going to set this back to our Canon glossy photo paper. And uh, we, now we have the option for the 600. Notice that the 300 PPI is grayed out. That's because that particular paper, it doesn't think you're going to need it, but some of the plain papers or the, uh, the basic coated papers, you will have that option. Basically, it reduces the input resolution by half, uh, makes it much faster to process a file because those types of papers really can't handle the extra resolution. And this image shows some additional information on that option. All right, so image properties allows you to see the resolution of the image and the bit depth. Now, the bit depth is really important because that allows you to make a decision whether or not it's worthwhile adding the additional uh, high gradation bit depth. Now, again, the file has to have the 16-bit in order for that to be there. Next, we're going to look at the print mode. Now, the print mode allows you to determine how many passes the printhead will lay down and how much detail and the speed. Standard is going to be excellent, excellent quality for most prints. And here you can see the print modes are explained in more details. Um, again, we've got another option here for the output profile. And here is an explanation of the output profile settings available. Your option is to do a monochrome or a black and white image. Uh, this will give you a really nice black and white image if the customer is requesting that without having to make any changes in Photoshop. The other option is to do no color correction. And this mode would be reserved if you could print uh, an ICC color target for profiling. This would be the way that you would print the target to make sure that no color correction is applied. If you want to select an ICC profile for the media. If you have an ICC profile that's been downloaded or one for the media, then you can select it here. Some of the expert users will realize that ICC profiles can give you better results. Just make sure you're getting the right printer for the one you've selected. So you've got to match up the media type with the output profile. The proof option allows you to 
in a sense, dumb down this output to match that of a printing press. In most cases, you're not going to want to do this, but if you do want to use the option, it's there. Again, it will create a, a proof of that printing condition. You could simulate the paper color. Say, example, for example, you selected a magazine with a very yellowish tint in the, in the proof. It would lay down a yellow tint to simulate that. Keep in mind, if you change the copies, something that I got caught here before is that it remembers that in the next one. So make sure if you switch copies to put that back. Um, the sharpening is available. If the image you have brought in is very low sharpening, then you can increase it. I would leave that on the defaults. You can close the plugin after printing. That's a personal preference. The output method, this allows you to save your image to the hard drive of the printer. And you can recall that from the printer console at a later time for reprinting. Print after reception is complete. That allows you to allows the printer not to start printing until it's received all of the data. And that's it for this dialog box. We can say OK and return back to the main export plugin. OK, so now let's take a look at the page setup. That's the next tab on the top left. And we have the option for borderless printing. Now, borderless printing is a great way to maximize your printing without cutting, but it will take away uh, some image area on the sides. So keep in mind, you're going to lose three millimeters on all sides with borderless printing. So you got to make sure that you select the proper roll size, as we saw there. Um, we can enlarge or reduce the printing. We can fit to the paper size. We can fit to the roll size. And when we click on that, it's going to bring up another the same dialog box to ask us what the size of the roll is loaded in the printer. And we can go to scaling. Now, this is where I like this, this tool, is you can see exactly how the scaling is going to be affected. You can see the, the numbers are increasing as we increase the scaling. And you can see on the roll how that's going to fit. So in the print area layout, we can move that around. We can drag, drag the handles to increase the size. You can see that goes beyond the image area. We can move it to the middle, which is very cool. I think that's a great Add, added benefit uh, for anyone who's doing a lot of printing to be able to quickly adjust that. You can specify the start position in the layout. Um, you can also select from a number of presets or there are a number of ways in which you can create your own presets. Within the size options dialog box you can change from inches to millimeters depending upon your preference and now you'll see that the input image size has changed to inches if that's more convenient. So we go back into the size options and uh, at the very bottom are your custom page sizes and we're going to create a custom page size here that is let's say 44 inches by let's say 18 inches. So you, you specify the name and you make sure that the width is the same as your name which is going to be 44 by 18 and we want to click on the add button. So now that's in the dialog box but it hasn't selected it yet. You got to make sure that you go down to paper size and scroll down to the bottom and make sure you select that new newly created page size. Okay, so now we can scale it up. Now we're at 230 plus uh, percent. You want to make sure that you have the, the DPI within the image to handle this uh, increase in scaling. As a general rule, um, you can get away with about 125 DPI. So this one dialog box I just want to show you allows you to make sure that no space will be top and bottom. It will not add extra uh, white area. So if your page size is bigger than the image, it'll cut it directly after the image. Okay, so that's good for saving on media. And let's go into the color settings. Within color settings, you can make some fine tuning adjustments. You want to make sure you have a calibrated monitor before you make any uh, subjective uh, decisions here. But you can increase the brightness and maybe adjust the contrast a little bit and give it a little bit extra uh, saturation. It's a very quick way to fix an image um, if you're looking for a quick fix, if you will. So that added a little contrast and bumped up the image. We can bring that back to the defaults and then print it as such. Okay. There's also the ability to adjust curves. And if you're more comfortable making curve adjustments, you can do some quick global adjustments within here for brightening. Again, get it back to the defaults. 
The print history, this allows you to uh, create favorites of print jobs and you can apply a previously printed jobs. Remember that this only applies after you've printed. So once you close the dialog box, you can come back into this here, uh, this area and create a favorite and save it. Um, the print information is great if you've got a lot of uh, prints going through and you want to remember the name and the file history and how it was printed and if any color adjustments were made. Um, it does add and need a little bit extra area. Um, we can put that on the bottom or on the top. So once that's all done, you just want to make sure that uh, you review everything on the main page once you've made all the settings. Okay, everything looks good. We've got our proper output profile. Our resolution and everything is set properly and we can hit print.